Today, we become legends. Smite is a long way from bug free, we all know that. But while some bugs might be extremely minor and have no real impact, others can be game changing or just downright hilarious to witness. So today I'm going to cover the top 10 most hilarious bugs of all time in Smite. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you like these top 10 type of videos, but let's just jump in. Number 1, Baron Sandy's 3 rooting targets even if they're root immune. This one is pretty self explanatory, Baron Sandy's release was a complete and utter shit show for many reasons, but one of the dumbest unintended mechanics of his release was that his 3 that applied the ramp to root CC was classed as a slow for the entire duration, and so even if the target was completely immune to roots, they would still be rooted at the end of his 3. This one really just gets me because it's so antithetic to what it actually should do. And you know what, while we're at it, bonus bug for Baron Samdi's release, I just remembered this one. For some reason Baron Samdi randomly got extra power for drinking Baron's Brew, no idea why, so that one was pretty funny as well. Number 2, Sol double proccing Polynomicon on her 2 at release. Another release god that had a really stupid bug, however, where Baron's were mostly just funny and rarely applied in a real match, this one made a huge difference to Sol's release performance and was a large part of the reason she was a top 10 god release in terms of power level. So for those that don't know, Souls 2 at release was treated as a basic attack and would proc basic attack item effects, most notably Polynomicon. This was an intended mechanic, however what was not intended was that it proc the effect on both ticks of the ability. In Polynomicon's case, this meant you dealt 150% of your magical power in additional damage on top of the damage her 2 already did by default. Yeah, Souls 2 at release would frequently hit harder than most mage ultimates because of this pretty game breaking bug. Bug number 3, Yawn proccing Death's Toll on his basic attacks. So this one is far more recent than most on this list and I'm sure many of you watching experience this one or have at least seen it in action. In the season 8 PTS phase, starter items were added back to the game for the first time in over 3 years, and among those starters was Death's Toll. Yormungandr was released in 2019, a long time after the original removal of Death's Toll, and so there seemed to be no programming in place to prevent his tick damage basic attacks from activating the item on every hit. This made for some absolutely ridiculous healing where Yom could heal 40% of his health in seconds using only basic attacks and a 700 gold item. Naturally, this was fixed for the full release of Season 8, but it was funny while it lasted. Number 4, Ares Ultimate Cooldown Cancel. This one is really, really old, but honestly one of the most hilarious bugs of all time in my opinion. Back in the day, Ares could cast his ultimate, applying the chains to all enemies, forcing their beads or CC immune ultimates, then use an old version of Aegis Amulet to cancel his ultimate channel before activating the pull and refund the cooldown. Yes, Ares could burn beads and still have his ult ready for round 2, basically guaranteeing a free pull on most of the enemy team that were foolish enough to beads the first time. So next time you beads an Ares ult, think yourself lucky we aren't living in this time still. Number 5, Morrigan ult. Falling through the floor, dying for no reason after ulting, adding extra players to the scoreboard, crashing the game, do I need to keep going? Number 6, Nemesis Double Dash. This one is really interesting specifically because it was a bug that just became a feature because people liked it more than the intended mechanic. So at Nem's original release back in beta, she was supposed to only get the second dash if she hit an enemy god with the first dash. But when she was released, people quickly found out that she could just double dash regardless of if she hit anything at all. This was identified as a bug but was never fixed and just became a feature as Nemesis felt a lot better being able to just double dash at any time. Number 7, Sol's abilities hitting towers at release. Yeah, Sol has two appearances on this list. This second infraction is here because Sol's 1, 2 and 3 could all damage towers on launch. The 2 made some sense as it was treated as a basic attack back then as mentioned earlier, but her 1 and 3 had absolutely no business being able to hit towers, especially when she already had the best tower pressure in the game by far at launch, and could easily take both towers in dual lane within 5 minutes. This was just icing on the cake for soul release. Bug number 8, Merlin's Infinite Blizzard Tick. This one is another somewhat recent one that you may remember. For a long time actually, Merlin's Ice Stance 2 could randomly just continue to tick on you forever as if you were still stood in the AoE until you died. Yeah, I don't know what line of code they fucked up to cause that to happen, but if this admittedly rare bug chose to afflict you, you were just dead. No matter how much health you had, you could be a full health soul laner with maxed out magical defense. If you stepped into Blizzard and this bug applied, it would just eventually kill you. I guess you could spend the rest of the match in Fountain to survive it, but other than that, you basically had to accept your fate. Book number 9, Jumping Over a Merkle Slash Yana's Portal. Let me be clear here, I'm not talking about leap abilities, I'm talking about spacebar jump. You know, that thing that's supposed to have no gameplay applications and is purely visual? Well, until fairly recently, that was not the case. With impeccable timing, you could actually spacebar jump over a Mercurial and dodge it completely. And with enough movement speed, you could run jump over a grounded Yana's Portal. 
I'm sure there are other cases like this that weren't popularized with ground targeted abilities and the jump mechanic, but these were by far the two most prevalent cases. And finally, bug number 10, Sanguine Season 7 SPL Fire Giant Glitch. So this glitch itself isn't anything too crazy, but it's the way it was used that stirred up quite a lot of fanfare in the Smite Pro scene. This glitch was as follows. You could stand near the edges of the Fire Giant Pit, maintain aggro of the objective, but dodge the Meteor Toss ability, which is a good portion of the Fire Giant's unavoidable damage. With this bug, you could avoid the Meteors like you would avoid the Line of Fire attack, which makes Fire Giant tanking far less risky, especially for a hunter with lifesteal. This bug, however, was abused by the Season 7 SPL team Sanguine Esports in an actual Pro League match, and while the bug itself probably wasn't the actual cause for their win, given that both times they performed this exploit they were already way up in golden XP, and were likely going to win the game anyway, it still caused quite a stir as many called it a breach of competitive integrity. The team was ultimately fined $500 per player for this, and it did cause some major risks in the pro scene for quite a while, which is why I wanted to include it on this list, even though the bug itself isn't really anything spectacular. But that's 10 hilarious and game-breaking bugs in Smite's history. If you enjoyed this one, then be sure to drop a like before you leave and subscribe for more top 10s on the channel. If you have any other ideas for cool top 10s I could do, then leave them down below, and if not, then you can drop your favourite bug from this list down there instead. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in another video later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.